Chapter 16. A Bitter Aftertaste. To Stella's astonishment, inside the garage was the family's beautiful Rolls Royce. Except it wasn't beautiful anymore. The, ca the car was now a jumble of broken glass and twisted metal. The windscreen was smashed and the bonnet had been squashed to pieces. The silver lady statuette that stood proudly above the engine on all Rolls Royces was bent over to one side. In, a month, in the month since the accident, the car had become coated in a thick layer of dust. A spider had even spun a cobweb in one of the broken windows. Stella wept a river of tears upon seeing the car like this. It made everything real. There really had been a horrific car crash, and judging by the extent of the damage, Stella was extremely lucky to be alive. Anyone sitting on the front seat would have been killed in an instant. I'm so sorry, my lady, whispered Soot, S spotting an oily rag on the floor. He bent down to pick it up. Uh, wipe your eyes on this. I know it's not one of your posh lacy handkerchiefs. It's the best I can do. Stella was touched by his kindness and took it with a smile. Maybe I was wrong to doubt my aunt. She must be telling the truth about the accident, said the girl. She sniffed as she wiped her face, which was now a ma mess of tears, cold and soot. Why, lo why lock you down in the coal cellar if the old witch has nothing to hide? She said it was more for my own good reason, Stella, so I wouldn't try running away again in the middle of the night. The ghost shook his head. It smells very fishy to me, my lady. Now think, can you remember anything about the crash, he asked. Anything at all? The girl searched her mind. It's all such a blur. Anything, insisted Sir. Don't have to be something big, anything. Something small might give us a great big clue to solving the case. The ghost was really sounding like a detective now. Stella thought for a moment before retracing the events of that day in her mind. Papa and Mama and I were going to motor down to London. Papa had to go to the bank again. You see, my aunt had got all this into, got us all into terrible debt, and Papa is... The girl stopped herself for a moment and offered her a supportive smile. I mean, Papa was so charming and clever. He always managed to persuade the bank manager to let us keep Saxby Hall. And Mama knew I wanted to see Buckingham Palace where the king lives. We never had any money to go inside anywhere, but I didn't mind. I loved my ma so much it never mattered what we did, just as long as we were together. My arm tucked into hers. Your old ma must have been a very special lady, murmured Soot. For a moment the pair stood in the garage in a sad silence as the sound of a snowstorm swirled outside. She was... Stella agreed eventually. She'd never have thought that the former Lady Saxby would describe as your old ma, but she knew Soot meant it nicely. What about your aunt? Did she come with you? asked the boy. The girl shook her head. Papa asked if she wanted to come, but she said no. Sometimes she would want to ride into London to buy toys for a pet owl to rip to shreds, but not that day. That bird gate gives me the willies, exclaimed Soot. He's had a good peck at me over the years, chased me up chimneys quite a few times. They say animals can sense ghosts, said Stella. It's more than sense, my lady. He can see me as clear as day. All animals can. So why didn't your aunt come too? Oh, yes. Well, Alberta was very sure she wanted to stay at home. Interesting. Very interesting. The ghost was rubbing his chin now, taking to this sleuthing role perfectly. So do you remember anything at all about the crash? No, replied the girl, nothing at all. The last thing I caught was feeling very ill and passing out on the back seat of the rolls. The ghost had been pacing up and down the garage, but now stopped dead still. This sounded like an important clue. Ill, my lady? Yes, I was feeling sick and I was sweating, even though it was a cold day. Go on. As we motored into town, I kept on closing my eyes. The last time I closed them, that's when the rolls must have crashed. What about your ma and pa? The girl's mind was racing. It was all coming back to her. Mama told me she didn't feel well either, but she knew that Papa's meeting with the bank manager was very important. He had to save Saxby Hall. She didn't want him to have to turn it back for her. Soot was convinced they were on to something now. What about your pa? I don't know, replied the girl with a sigh. If he wasn't feeling well, he hid it. But that's what Papa was like. He always kept a stiff upper lip. The ghost began pacing up and down again, trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. If your old man was feeling ill too, that could have ex explained the crash. I know, agreed the girl, sitting on the back seat. I kept feeling like I was blacking out.
"'What could make you all ill like that?' said Sir almost to himself. "'Was there a funny smell of anything in the car? "'A funny smell like what? "'Dunno. Fumes from the exhaust, maybe. "'That could make you all feel ill. "'No.' The girl was certain of that. There was no need for anything wrong with the car. It was Papa's pride and joy. He always kept the rolls in mint condition. The engine purred like a cat when he drove it. Then if it's not the car, muttered the ghost, there must be something else. Did you all have anything strange to eat that morning? No, Mamma cooked us boiled eggs with soldiers. We had that for breakfast every day. Suddenly Stella remembered something. But, yeah, the goat seized upon, ghost seized upon this. Well, Aunt Alberta made us all a pot of tea that morning. A pot of tea? Yes, and she never made us tea. She would never normally do anything like that for us, ever. That's why I remembered it, and I remember saying to Mamma that the tea tasted funny. Funny? Well, I mean funny peculiar. Strange. But Ma told me to drink it up as not to be rude to Aunt Alberta. I couldn't stomach it, though, so when nobody was looking, I poured my cup onto a pot plant into a plant pot. What did it taste like, my lady? asked Soot. Stella was desperately trying to remember. I must only have had a mouthful. Bitter somehow. I put lashings of milk and sugar in my tea, but it definitely had a bitter aftertaste. Did your aunt have any of her tea? No, no, she didn't. Stella was sure of it. Aunt Alberta poured out a cup from the pot for herself, but she never had a sip. Did your ma and pa think it tasted funny too? Well, if they did, they were too polite to say so in front of her, replied Stella. But I noticed them both grimace when they drank it. Suddenly a thought raced across her mind like a bolt of lightning. Alberta must have laced the tea with... The pair looked at each other and spoke at the same time. Poison. <laughs>